The views, information, and opinions expressed during the following program are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent the views of Access Communications, its representatives, or its employees. Welcome to Planting Seeds, Philanthropy in Saskatchewan, a show where we aim to connect you to the community impact that's being powered by donors and charities across the prairies. I'm your host, Victor Roman, with the South Sask Community Foundation. I hope you enjoy the show. It's my pleasure to introduce you to our guest today, Bob Friedrich. Bob's a project consultant. Uh, he does quite a bit of work with South Sask Community Foundation. And to be honest, if you're watching this on Access, you might recognize his face if you watch one of their other shows. He's a, he's a man of many talents, but today we're actually going to be talking about granting and grant writing in the charitable world. And Bob kind of said, he's like, let's make this not boring. So <laughs> I'm going to make sure that this is something that uh, not only for charities watching or people that might be interested in, you know, what it's like to write a grant uh, to, to learn more, but also to, to give the broader audience a bit of an insight and in what it actually looks like when charities are, are writing grants, when people are assessing grants, what, what the process is really um, go behind the curtains. Mm. Um, so Bob is a 30 plus year veteran who's managed and designed grant programs for large funders and has helped many nonprofits obtain grant funding. And he offers effective workshops in grant writing, including uh, some workshops he'll actually be doing with South Sask Community Foundation throughout the year. Um, so welcome, Bob. Thank, thank you, Victor. Wow. <laughs> with that, is there anything else you want to uh, let everyone know about your background or, or, or your, your grant writing experience? Yeah. Well, let me, let me talk a little bit about it. Is that I spent 30 years with the federal government working on granting. I was a program officer, program manager. So really my job was to, let's say you're my client coming to see me, mm -hmm. the South Sass Community Foundation, is to listen to what your project is and then try and see where it fits into with our bailiwick of programs. And if you're having a bit of a struggle with your program or project, I should say, I would try to help you. And that was just the mandate of the departments I work for. I worked for five of them. So, and they were all departments which gave money to the community. So my job was to really help you develop your project a little better. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not just to say yes or no. Some funding agencies are a little bit more hemmed in with that. Mm -hmm. they, they don't have the ability to work with uh, a developmental approach, just the nature of who they are and the, the limited staffing. I was lucky when I worked for, for these five different departments, the last being the Department of Canadian Heritage, mm -hmm. that I could actually sit down with you and let's have a look at what you got here. And this is what we're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. And this is what you're trying to achieve. And let's see if we can work together and massage and make make the project work for both of us so yeah, yeah. So, so really help people not only design um, projects that will be successful for funding but really impactful projects then, right? yeah and a lot of times you know when we're I, I do write grants for people and I got to experience what it's like to be on the other side of the desk yeah. and you've written grants mm -hmm. uh, Victor and and we were talking about that earlier which I really like hearing about mm -hmm. is anybody who's done it uh, is valuable to me because mm -hmm. they have an experience that I haven't had mm -hmm. and every mm -hmm. experience is different when you're dealing with uh, an agency it feels like sometimes you're guessing which door is where is the money behind where's yeah. the answer behind <laughs> is it door number one is it door number two or door number three and so hopefully as you and I talk today we can demystify that a little bit yeah. and make things a little better for people it's still a challenge because you're on the outside and that other person's on the inside. Yeah. But if mm -hmm. you get a good program officer, a good person to work with, they will share with you a lot of insights mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and help you with that kind of thing. Yeah. So. Well, and, and just to even follow up on what you said, and I know, I know a lot of this show is really me prompting you questions that you kind of mentioned. We'll probably have a bit of a back and forth. Uh, my role with the South Sask Community Foundation, I'm not sure if the audience knows this either, but yeah, tell us beyond, about that, Victor. <laughs> beyond doing kind of the communication side of things, which would be more um, what, what this show is part of, um, mm -hmm. I also mm -hmm. um, oversee uh, 
the grants, the, the grant applications that come in oh, through really? our different okay. grant processes. Yeah. So there's there's a wide variety of them, and all of them are assessed a little bit differently. So I actually oversee the assessment. I fil facilitate those assessments, and me and and our team kind of help charities while they're applying, and mm. then um, do the work with our committees while they're assessing. So you're managing so some granting programs yourself. Yeah, 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 and. <clears throat> To give you a, a bit of an idea of what we do, and then we can have a, a bit yeah, of a Yeah, I like this because so. I'm learning from you right now. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So, so there's there's a few that we we manage. And the ones that, well, we have a lot of funds at, at the foundation, but the ones that I manage are ones where either the donors or we've designated that we're going to have um, charities actually put in applications and apply for the funding. So it's so, a real granting process. Yeah, so, so part of what I oversee is, um, you know, what the actual applications look like, what we're mm. asking for, the information we need to get from them, making mm. sure that we're getting clear information from the charity, but also not making it overwhelming mm, uh, that's to a the nice charity. Thing. You know, a lot of times I found when I, when I worked giving away money, much like you did, but also applying for it, sometimes it felt very onerous. You know, mm -hmm. like there was a lot of stuff that was going on here and I wasn't sure what the value add was you know when I was applying to somebody and mm -hmm. uh, and just the same on the other side the last few years of my career I worked with uh, a program called celebrating Saskatchewan's hundred years in confederation yeah. and what I tried to do in that program as the program manager was to really simplify it mm -hmm. not to make it so that we just did things willy-nilly but that the client could come in and get a really simple, straightforward answer as to mm -hmm. what we were looking for. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it felt to me, even when I was doing it, that uh, our programs in some areas were very, a uh, lot of complex uh, information which somebody, I felt almost they had to be kind of a, an Olympic swimmer to get through all <laughs> yeah. this stuff, you know? Yeah. So I, that was my, that was my treat at the end of my career as a, I got to really design, and I worked on other design teams, lots of them. Yeah. But when you're working on national teams, things get uh, get much more complicated. Oh yeah. But yeah. I had control over this program a lot more, so we could simplify it. I had a great team of officers worked with me, and we put together something that was really straightforward, and that the public could understand. At least I mm -hmm. hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe there's somebody out there who says no, it wasn't yeah. any good. <laughs> Well, even just talking about, I guess, from your experience, and I know you've helped a lot of different organizations and nonprofits apply for grants. What are the what are some of the common maybe challenges or hurdles you see that they have to get over when they're applying for certain grants? First of all, you've got to have somebody that that can be a good writer. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to craft things and and be concise. One of the challenges that I find on both sides is that people want to tell you a lot. Mm -hmm. But it's, uh, it's, it's in that telling, there's an overtelling sometimes. Yep. There's so much information. I remember when I would get applications, I would, uh, like some of them are like books, you know, mm -hmm. and you're looking for what a, uh, grant programs are really designed to do very simple things. They're, they're designed to trigger some sort of social change or buy something in the marketplace yep. that the funder is after. Yeah. And when you're doing the application, sometimes the tendency is, and what I teach people, I try to work with it, is to say, tell me your co core concept in 25 words or less. Mm -hmm. And because I, I do a car show also with access and mm -hmm. do a lot of television or have done a lot of television, the television, television industry or TV industry or film industry got it very quickly is they call it your sort of your elevator pitch, yeah. 25 words mm -hmm. or less. So if you're starting a grant, the first thing I suggest is try and get your core idea in about 25 words. Yeah, I usually, if someone's kind of talking to me outside of a, a grant period when it's neutral, I'll let them know like the important thing really is the first thing someone reads is going to be what tells them if they want to look further or not. So if you can explain what your challenge is, how it aligns, with the ask of this grant. So maybe it's a grant specifically looking to fund, um, let's say food security. So mm. it's like, what's the challenge? This is how it aligns with the goal of your fund. And these are the outcomes we're looking to do. Those three things, if you can say that right off the top, 
And you can make say that, that again, really Victor. Clear. So that I'm learning from it's Victor. The, I, I did this, but I don't mind. Le- every well, day is a learning thing. First, you want to really outline the challenge. Yeah. Make sure it aligns with what you're asking for. Yeah, so, yeah. so that you're not asking for, let's say, well, let's say we're talking. It's a grant for food security. This and isn't a moonshot. <laughs> yeah. We're not asking for infrastructure or something yeah, like that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Exactly. And then explain really quickly what the expected outcome is going to be. So. Mm. The change that you want to yeah, make change. in the marketplace. Yeah. And yes. as soon as you outline that, then everything to follow can be the details that elaborate more on that within the, the limited space that you have. But really, if you can if you can say that clearly, then people don't have to keep going back because the reality is, um, at least mm-hmm. with, with us, I think this yeah, is true of a lot know. of funders, it's is true. more and more charities are applying for grants. Oh, yeah. But the funding available isn't necessarily <laughs> going up at that rate. So like what we what we saw at our foundation specifically, even in the last the year. The South Sask Community yeah, Foundation. Almost yes. every single um, grant application was at least uh, oversubscribed by double the amount of applications. That's a lot. So, you know, if you're looking at something that's getting funding, well, here's an example. There's one, I think, I'm just throwing out estimate numbers, but we probably funded about 15 projects Mm -hmm. out of say 45 that applied. Mm -hmm. So when you've got a committee and they're a volunteer committee and they're coming in and they've got limited time to look through everything, you've got these are the assessors. Yeah, the assessors that that okay. So you bring in community panels that uh, will look at that's good. Depending on the situation, like that's very popular. Some Some funds have a set of juries, even. Yeah, some some we have like yeah committees. I don't even know what's the right word, but like no, no, they're they're all fair words. They're all fair words. Like assessment groups. uh, Yeah. Some are you know if it's a family that put together the fund, then the family's reviewing it. So but whoever it is looking at it, the reality is is they're they're gonna have a long list to go through. And you want to stick out. So if you're going to stick out, they need to know exactly what you're doing right away. And I witnessed this um, with one of our recent grant applications. With um, We have one called the Truth and Reconciliation Fund. And there was oh. one person that I had talked to, like, I think, like months before we had even announced the process. And they were just asking me about some of these tips. And I told them kind of those, pretty much what I just said. And I can tell you, during the assessment process, I saw their application. It was super clear. Mm. And even though the, the they did what you asked, yeah, them even to though do. the assessors weren't extremely familiar with that organization specifically beforehand, mm. the way it was written put it right to the top right away. We always ask for, at least in our case, but a lot of organizations will ask similar questions where they want to know like a, a bit of a project summary. Yeah, yeah. And that project summary or that the project description. So they had that really crystal yeah, clear. Yeah, it's it's just that first little paragraph, the first couple sentences are crystal clear. If you didn't read a thing, you uh, beyond that, you know exactly what they're doing. And then you know, the rest is just extra context. You know what I found sometimes organizations were a little loath to do this. And I'm, I'm not criticizing mm-hmm. because I understand it so well as you, you're a little afraid mm-hmm. to tell people exactly what you're doing because mm-hmm. you're afraid. Well, if I just stretch it out a little bit and I'm kind of all things to all people, yeah. maybe they'll find something in me that yeah. they can fund. And it doesn't work, does it? No, <laughs> not always. <laughs> not always. And sometimes you can tell when people are trying really hard to kind of. Um, I, I know the the term that we used to use was like mission drift when I was on mission the charity drift. side, where sometimes, and this is kind of a. Well, you were with Big Brothers. I was with Big Brothers, Big Sisters, yeah. yeah, And just like talking to people. I was on their board, so I had a little bit of an idea who they are. That's right. That's right. But I know like one of the things that I had talked to with a lot of people at that time when I was new was they they said like, don't fall into mission drift. Like remember Mm. what your core purpose is and don't try to apply for things just because you think you need money. Like make sure the projects you're making align with what you actually do. Because for one, you're going to you're not going to be successful. People can tell if you're trying to stretch really, really hard into doing something you're not supposed yeah. to. Um, but also just, I, I want to back it up a, a little ahead, bit too. Ahead, on, as you mentioned, part of it is people trying to figure out like, you know, does my project fit? One of the big questions that we always get, and I'm curious on your insights is, mm-hmm. how much do I ask for if I'm looking for funding? You know, that's a really good question. A lot of people over the years, you know, I started with projects. Uh, sometimes it, we built in-house projects we would get a kind of a mission thing. Somebody would say, uh, let's say particularly with the Canada Games, uh, came down from the minister and say, I'd like to see more diversity in the Canada mm-hmm. Games. We are you know, want to see more of what Canada is all about, all the people that are, that are, that are part of Canada. So mm-hmm. we'd say, oh, okay, so that's what we want to do. So we try to work with, let's say, the Canada Games Committee or whatever it is mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. develop ideas. And so as we would develop those ideas, 
the project would start to get larger and then we'd say, oh, we're, we're actually doing what groups do to us sometimes is they come with a very large request. Mm -hmm. So, and the large request has to match a large budget mm -hmm, or the mm -hmm. small request has to match a small budget. So if you're sitting around as a person doing applications, I think your first job is to assess what's the appetite, what's the budget that these people can really mm -hmm. afford. There's no use applying to somebody and asking for a half million dollars if they're only giving away a half million and they're trying to give that to 30 or 40 organizations. Yeah. yeah. So there's a bit of homework on that is to uh, say, what is the appetite? And one of the things that I, I really encourage groups to do is if at all possible is to talk to the program officer mm -hmm. like you were. Mm -hmm. If they come and see Victor and they'd say, well, you know, we're thinking of doing this. Uh, we're thinking our budget might be, our need might be in the five, ten, or fifteen thousand dollar range. Mm -hmm. And what would you say to them if, if it was oh, yeah. only a three thousand dollar grant that you're hoping to give away? Well, for me personally, it kind of depends a little bit on when they're asking this. Oh, <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> so, for example, if if a grant window is open, and mm -hmm. someone's asking for advice that could potentially give them advantages on their application, mm -hmm. I do everything to not give them advantages. I only give them information that can be publicly available to everyone. So for okay. example, if someone's saying, hey, we have this project, we want to apply for 20,000 mm. and we're applying to this grant. And I might say, well, the maximum amount is actually 15. So just be be mindful of that. And then I'll send yeah. them to that information. That That's sort good of thing. information. But, but if someone's talking to me more generally and it's not about a specific application and it's outside of granting windows and they're saying like, hey, we have this sort of project, you know, we think it's a three thousand dollar project. I, I'd be happy to look at eyes on that. At that point, I might even say, like, based on what you're telling me right now, like watch for these application, like watch for these mm. grant opportunities, mm -hmm. not just from our foundation, but then here's also other places you can look. So like an example. This will hint into another episode we're doing of this show. No, but no, like, it's okay. You know, Go if ahead. If you've got children's sure. programming, I'll, I'll point them to what we have. I'll tell them what, what, what dates we have. But then I'll also say, like, check out the Access Children's Fund, for example. Yeah. Like, as yeah. another opportunity well, or, or other. We're here at Access. Like yeah, yeah. So, as long as there's a neutrality to it, as long as it's outside of, it's not specifically talking about like, hey, right now we're applying for the uh, let, let's say the the Truth and Reconciliation Fund, and this is our project. And if they want me to like have eyes on their project and start to edit their budget and things like that, then I'll yeah. say like, I can't touch any of that really. Um, what we will do though, is if there are flags, we will just bring them up just in general. Like if someone, if it looks to us, like someone <coughs> submitted a budget that just like, isn't what they meant to, we'll, we'll nudge them and say like, Hey, we just noticed that this number seems really high. Like, do you want to take a look at that before you? When you're sitting on the outside, you have no idea what the appetite or budget is of the organization. Yeah. And if somebody will tell you, well, this is really the typical grant is three to five yeah. thousand or ten thousand. And I found people at the city of Regina are good that way, and yeah. other agencies are good. Some big amorphous, having worked for the federal government, but you're you're looking at these very complicated websites, yeah. and you're trying to figure out, well, what would these people really except as a number yeah. and and the best thing i can say is is try and phone that officer and sometimes it's very difficult mm -hmm. when it's a national thing mm -hmm. but some of them are quite good and then a lot of these organizations will give you a history yes like if you go to the saskatchewan arts board they will talk about uh, they'll put on their website well, we've had, we gave away 50 grants last year or the community initiatives mm -hmm. fund. I've seen them yep. do that. They will, that's very helpful for yep. people if there's a history there. So, so look for that and, yep. and see if that can make sense and, uh, and you know, what you can do. One strategy I saw groups try to employ and it, it wasn't very effective. It mm -hmm. did, it did gain some interest was to give a very voluminous application and say, well, just spread it around, you know, if you yeah. want this or that or whatever it is. And it makes it hard for the program officer mm -hmm. when you get, let's say, uh, you're only giving away little bits of money, five, ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000, and somebody gives you a million dollar proposal. And maybe in that proposal, there are elements that you could fund. It's better to have a discussion with that group read it through, look it through, mm -hmm. and then say, call them back and say, well, there is one element here that we could look at, yeah. but you're going to have to kind of develop that more and, yeah. 
and and let's see if we can deal with that not just sort of, sort of toss it on the desk and say yeah, well yeah. you find out where where we qualify and that yeah. it, there's a lot of homework and it becomes a partnership don't you find that with some of the oh absolutely the groups? absolutely and one of the things i know we're trying to work on and this really predates me but it's just constantly reassessing what we do and trying to make it a little more easier give out more and like give out more information publicly that everybody has fair access to because that that's one of the things like there's things that if i don't feel like i can tell it to everybody i won't tell it to some one person applying but then yes. trying to define it's like you have well, no faves if, then. We, yeah. <laughs> if there is a piece of information that we're like well it would be useful if everybody knew that and we can tell everybody then like making sure that that appears on the website that that appears when people are applying yeah. things like that or there's actually one this is one thing that um was really really neat that we we implemented just in January of uh, 2023. This is at the foundation. Yeah, right? at our yeah. foundation is, uh, we're always looking at kind of accessible and innovative ways to make the, the process easier for the applicant, which doesn't necessarily That's a good mean funding agency, it's going to be easier for some the- Some funding agencies yeah. get a little stuck because, not because they're bad or wrong, no. but they're large and it's hard to move parts around. Sounds like you're very we're, flexible. F flexibility is one of our uh, core and advantages, innovative. just yeah. in, on both sides, whether you're a donor or a charity, we try to be really flexible. And, That's uh, a good thing. So one of the things we implemented, and we only saw a few applications come in, but it was really neat to see is uh, for the Truth and Reconciliation Fund, we know the importance of oral storytelling and oral mm. uh, history mm. and, and the oral aspect of it. So we felt like making people do a written proposal itself isn't necessarily the most um, culturally inclusive way, I oh, guess. Okay. So we actually allowed wow. people to send in audio or video uh, well, versions of their application that, where they just talked. That, you told me and, that that was the first time I had ever yeah. heard that. And there that was, is really innovative. And then then you're not limited by your, your writing skills. And, and in this case, it really was just something where it felt like, you know, it is more work. To get an audio file and have to listen to yeah. it and transcribe it and take out Were the they long, some of them? Like five or six minutes, maybe. Oh, that's not bad. So oh. not, not too bad. I mean, if you had it wasn't a whole... like a two-hour tape that you had no, to pull no, through. No, no, no. Um, but it was kind of neat because we saw, you know, for some people, it it meant a lot. Just the fact, even some people that didn't apply that way, it meant a lot that we were accepting it that way just because they'd never that seen it cool. before. I love um, that. See, one of the things when I gave money away, we would work with nonprofit and they all had to have charitable numbers and things. Mm -hmm. But we also had programs that would deal with ad hoc committees. The more flexible you are, mm -hmm. the more porous you are, the more people feel they can engage with you. Yeah. You get better proposals that yeah. way sometimes. Yeah. And and for us too, like it is really important to remember like what are we here for? And the real answer is community impact, right? And one, that is one, of the so things that, good. one of the things that I get hung up on a little bit, and you can see it sometimes with grant applications and when you're talking to assessors and stuff, is that sometimes you'll have an application that comes in and like you just have a feeling like this is probably a good project, but the yes. application just like doesn't define it enough. <laughs> so we can't the... actually fund it because we just don't know enough about it. Or there'll be other cases But there's a good where, vibe off it. Yeah, yeah. Or, and, and those are the sorts of things where we're trying to figure out like how can we make sure that we're getting more of that information, or that they're well, getting you know, their information my, to us my better, thought would and we be can make things that, that. that when you're in the grant process and you're stuck with the time frame and everything mm -hmm. that you have to deal with, you probably could go back to I, what I would do sometimes when, because our programs might be three or four intakes in a year, so you get something early in the year mm -hmm. that's like that. You put it aside, and then you have that sort of uh, chat with folks mm -hmm. and say, this is what's really good about it. And we really like this. And you get that collaborative partnership working uh, together. Mm -hmm. And that, that that's what I would do with something like that. Is yeah. that I felt like this is really... Because there are those jewels. I remember even uh, with the Centennial, I had a little more liberty. I could look at projects and we had a couple, three intakes. I could see this is really good. And one of the officers would... Uh, go back to them and work with them a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then the second round or whatever it was could uh, actually, you know, spruce it up and make it work. Yeah. I, I had a few thoughts here that I thought I would share mm -hmm. sort of hints just to, cause we're talking about that. I, I always say to myself or say to the groups when I'm teaching a class is always talk to the program officer mm -hmm. if you can, because mm -hmm. that's, as you're telling us, that's where the good stuff 
kind of comes out. And a lot of groups think, oh, I can't phone them, I can't talk to them. And some you can't, but many, many you can. Yeah, yeah. And I also thought, here's what you see what you think of this, Victor, is that nowadays, because I, I did applications, everything has gone electronic. Used to be you would develop a proposal and then you would mail it in mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it would be just a kind of a hard copy thing. Yeah. And now there's four. Do you have forms at your place that people fill out? or It's they, all online. Yeah. It's all online. Yeah. In doing these online applications, there's there's like 200 words. <laughs> you got to yeah. get in there. So it, very simple ways. How do you deal with that? So I, I, I used to start r filling them in right in the box. And then I realized, well, this is hopeless. So what I'd take it, I'd take the question mm -hmm. and I'd put it into a Word document. And then I would answer the question with the question, mm -hmm. so to speak, because the question has all the key areas that yes. you're looking for. Yeah. And I would break that question down, say, OK, they're looking for sexual assault. So we got that in there. They're looking yeah. for food security. And, and, and a lot of times in your questions, when you're a funder, you're giving us the answer. Yes. Yeah. You're giving us the answer. Yeah. We just have to fill in the blanks. That's exactly right. So I would take that question and start to break it down and say, have I answered all that in a Word document? Yeah. And then correct it and play with it and then get the word count and then just copy and paste and stick it back in. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, because what I used to do was try to answer that question inside the application because you're busy mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you're going from one question oh i got to fill it all in here's 200 words i got to get that in there and then inevitably you go Bleh! <laughs> and you can't get it you can't get your 200 words in there because it's, it's a 400 word answer that you're coming yeah. up with automatically yeah so i found put it on the word document put the question in there and tear the question apart and try to answer it as much as you can and here's another yeah. one make sure your budget reflects the activities you have because I used to get budgets and I go where's this executive director uh, they never mentioned it in the yeah. proposal yeah and all of a sudden you got these expensive items in your budget mm -hmm. but you never talked about it in your proposal yeah and matching your organization's mandate yeah. I mean that's what you talked about yeah no that's perfect I think those tips are really the, if anyone's gonna take anything away it's those and um really with that I appreciate your time I think this has been a really good chat for me so i'm hoping the audience feels the same way you know if there's any organizations that are looking for ways to apply um just yeah i think like you said reach out first just talk to somebody that's really the first step and then we'll help you from there thanks for tuning in today if you want to learn more about grants you can visit the south sask community foundation at sscf.ca or find us online on facebook twitter linkedin youtube and spotify If you'd like to share your feedback on the program you just watched, contact us today.